here my name is Sarah I am a PhD student in English rhetoric and composition at Indiana University in Bloomington Indiana and we are in the middle of peak spring meaning the weather is really confused and super stormy it like stormed so bad last night there was just like crazy wind and it's supposed to continue through today it's really calm right now but I know we are in the midst of like a flood warning and some tornado warnings so this will be interesting to see how it impacts the rest of my day. I have some exciting things today. First things first, I ordered a new computer last night. I bit the bullet after a really frustrating day teaching where I tried to teach my students Adobe Premiere Pro because uh, I teach a digital literacy class and I had so many glitches and I felt really embarrassed because it made it feel like I didn't know what I was doing and I almost had a meltdown <laughs> and I was like it's time I need to just get a new computer I also filed taxes and was like okay I have my finances in order I know what I can reasonably afford I can afford this new computer partially because of YouTube so thank you guys so much but also because I won a teaching award that came with a monetary gift and I got the notification that's ready so I'm gonna pick that up after this zoom call is done and I also am gonna get my hair cut. Nothing too wild, just like trimming it. It's pretty long, uh, fixing, you know, the bang pieces. And I am a little nervous that that might get canceled though, because it's supposed to be at 3 p.m. And that's like when we're supposed to be like in the middle of tornado warnings. So we shall see. But I like cannot wait for this computer. Uh, I'm so, so excited. I'll obviously do a whole unboxing in just a second but i'm going to work on my dissertation for the next couple hours um i'm going to start off by watching a vlog my dissertation's about vlogs if you don't already know uh i'm trying to check out some new vloggers in a couple different areas to really like help me flush out the arguments that i'm making coming up to my office to grab a book this one which I have talked about quite a bit a while ago, especially. This book is so interesting, but I read it for the content and I want to revisit it to see like the way that she structures her case studies because I'm focusing on some case studies of my own. And I want to use this as like a sort of stylistic model. And while I'm here, I will sort this laundry and get a few loads going. Okay, finished up that call for the dissertation writing group. I managed to get some reading done of the book and then it inspired me to feel like instead of making an outline for how to structure this part based off of her like writing, I was like, you know, I should just like try and write it. So I started doing one of my case studies. So within this chapter, I'm doing four brief case studies of different YouTubers. And I'm not claiming that they are representative of their niche or the area that they're in as much as I'm saying like here's one way that audience awareness and embodied awareness is manifesting and it has some similarities and some resonances with other people in that niche. So for full-time influencers I'm focusing on Brooke Michio uh, which is really a wild ride because she's one of the first vloggers who I ever watched back when I started watching vlogs at the beginning of grad school and I'm talking specifically about um, the trajectory of her channel and how she used to share a lot of information about dating and she would really disclose a lot and how she's really begun to censor that especially with her current boyfriend um, and obviously there's a lot of like 
other parameters that go into this. I'm not doing an interview with her. I'm not going to try and read her mind and psychologically like psychoanalyze her or anything. I'm just saying here are some ways that we can understand this as demonstrating audience awareness and embodied awareness. And we can ask students to also create this type of content to facilitate these two types of awareness which are critical to the writing process and which are critical to better understanding themselves and healing their own relationships with their bodies because I'm really trying to keep in mind that my project is about so much more than just improving the teaching of writing it's about making academia at large more equitable and more inclusive and also on like a smaller scale and an individual scale just helping our students, especially our marginalized students, whether they're marginalized because of their gender, their race, their socioeconomic status, etc., just feel more connected to themselves and that their ways of knowing, which are predominantly associated with their bodies, are valid and are more than valid. They are encouraged and we should like lean into this. So yeah, really trying to keep that in mind. I did have a bit of... I don't want to say a mentee B, but like a minor setback. So I'll decide if I want to include that clip here or not, because I actually started vlogging yesterday and it was not a good day. Basically, I found out that I got rejected from a fellowship. And I didn't see this one coming. And I know that like my work is interesting and I know that it will be impactful. I just think the hardest part is like translating it to people who don't quite get it. I firmly believe and I like know in my gut and in my body that this will be helpful for others people just don't fully get it yet and I just like I hope that they do because I get it and I really believe in it I really just want people to get it it's like really hard when you, I've spent so much time dedicated to this project to not see it sort of valued quite yet but I know that my time is coming I know that people will get it because I have to choose to believe that I'm okay now I, I I had a good night's sleep I feel significantly better um yeah so that's where I'm at with writing I got like 350 words done which is pretty good in a perfect world I'd like to get 500 done on Tuesday mornings um especially since a lot of this was just like summary of like who Brooke Michio is and stuff, but that is okay. I think I'm going to shower quickly and then I'm gonna pick up a new computer. It's here, I'm gonna unbox it and also film a TikTok. So I have two things going at once right now. almost done transferring some files. I like cannot wait to see how fast everything goes. Everything looks so sleek. I'm so excited. Hair is cut. She always does such a perfect job. Love, it just feels a lot lighter. Um, nothing crazy, just the same style, just shorter. It was getting real dead at the bottom, I needed that. Also, I'm in the Kroger parking lot. There's a lot of people around and I feel self-conscious about vlogging. Um, stopping at Kroger to get some stuff for dinner for tonight and tomorrow. And then I'm gonna go home and give you guys the full update on my computer. Okay, back home now. I'm like looking out my window and watching the squirrel just dig in my neighbor's like big planter. Oh my gosh, flinging up all the dirt. I need to send her a text. Anyway, it's somehow already 5.03. I feel like I haven't really done anything today. I guess I worked on my dissertation for a solid three hours. And I got my hair cut, picked up this bad boy, went to Kroger, got some stuff for tonight. We're gonna make chili because we're getting like another cold front tonight and it's like the last cold weather until the fall. So we wanna, you know, get one last chili dish in. And I do want to give a little update on the computer. So I have only used it so far to like send emails and read like one PDF, but I can tell you guys the stats of what I got. 
So the Mac that I had before was still like with the Intel processors and since then they've come out with M1, M2, and M3. And then within M3 they have M3, M3 Pro, and M3 Max. I got the M3 Pro, the 14 inch, not the 16 inch in space black. And it is 18 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. I got this computer because it was quite frankly on sale at Best Buy. It was like significantly cheaper than it was on Apple's website, even with the education prices. And I don't know why there was a sale going on for 200 off on Best Buy's website, but even like with the extra 200, it was still significantly cheaper than Apple's website. So I don't know how that happens. I don't know how Best Buy like can get away with that. Um, but I ca called my brother last night. He's like, really, it's computers, major in computer science. And I was like, are they scamming me? And he's like, it's Best Buy. How are they scamming you? Anyway, um, so yeah, that's what we are working with. It has the built-in ports and it has built-in HDMI and built-in SD card reader on the other side. So the bottom is like thicker than my last laptop but it doesn't feel significantly heavier. It feels a little heavier, but okay, per, but not too much heavier. It also has the little touch print ID, but it doesn't have the touch board. I managed to bypass that whole era of computers just by waiting so long to get one, um, which I think is a good thing because there's a reason they stopped making them. I think they got really glitchy. And I know that was like frequently an issue with the MacBook Pros. But I'm gonna test it out, grade some podcasts, test out the speakers. I've already tested out the webcam and it is like so HD. Um, I'm gonna be like super high quality on all of my Zoom calls. Um, okay, so yeah, five o'clock. Feeling a little bad about things. I need to send an announcement to my students because I think I'm gonna make class optional tomorrow and get to grading. Hello? Do you want some dinner? Is it dinner time? Have our vegetarian chili all done, just simmering, waiting for Megan to come home. Some cilantro that I need to add to it, some lime that we add on top, and of course like cheese, sour cream, avocado. And I made some cornbread muffins, but I forgot about them. I was like, let me just hit the timer button and hear it going off and I know they're ready. And then they cooked for another like five minutes, so. I think they're gonna be a little toasty on the bottom. Actually, they're not too bad. Okay, all is, all is saved. Really needing this coffee today. I'm also obsessed with this mug I got from Target for like $5. Happy Wednesday. Here's the outfit. I'm gonna try on a different sweater because I don't think I love this color underneath. But I like the white pants and the sneakers. It's just an optional class today, so I feel like I could have worn jeans. I mean, these are basically jeans, but I don't know. I'm on campus all day, so if I like don't like the way I look, that like <laughs> really impacts my mood. Okay, I think I'm gonna actually go with this one because you don't really see the shirt under as much. It's loose. Um, it's comfier. It's like really cold again. <laughs> the weather brought in a cold front and when I woke up this morning it said feels like 31. I think it's supposed to get into like the mid 40s, like 45, 46, but it's supposed to be really windy so I'm gonna throw a coat on over this anyway. You know, that's what the Midwest is like in the spring months. When I'm on campus for a long day, I like to throw a bunch of things in my backpack. First things first, some deodorant. Uh, usually reapply at lunchtime. Well, probably not today because it's not that hot, but typically when it's hot. Some hand lotion. This is just like a travel size of the Sol de Janeiro that Joanna got me. It's not the focus. Of course, my wallet, some hair clips, a favorite Merit lip gloss, hand sanitizer, mints, my AirPods, um, just some like Advil and... I'll throw in my laptop, 
I have like a bunch of different Ipsy bags with little things. Like this one just has like tampons and pads. One of them has highlighters and pens. Another one just has like the essentials of like a touch up powder, um, stain remover, Clorox wipes, things like that. And I'm gonna bring a book for fun. I started this one last night, got it from the public library. Okay, back in my car after teaching. Like I said, I made it an optional class. So I was fully expecting like maybe no one to show up, but I had like three students show up sort of in waves in the first section. I was able to like give them some one-on-one -on -one help. And then in the second section, I also had like three or four students show up. So that was really great. I had a student who was like, hey, I was absent. Can you like talk to me about Adobe Premiere Pro? And we worked through some things together. And the rest of them were asking individual questions about like their argument that they're making in their video essay assignment. So I'm really glad that I decided to do this because I feel like if I would have just done like optional Zoom office hours, no one would have come. But by was saying like, I'm gonna be here, I'm ready to help you, I did have quite a few students come um, and I think that it was really helpful for them individually. So I have a four hour shift at the Writing Center starting at two and it is one. So I need to get some lunch. I actually walked across the street between sections, got a cup of coffee at the Inkwell. It was a $7 latte, but delicious. I needed it. So coffee sort of curbs my appetite. So I'm not that hungry. So I think I'm just going to get like a little mini sandwich from Jimmy John's and you know, I got to get a Dr. Pepper. Jimmy John's little turkey mini sub barbecue chips and of course Dr. Pepper. Oh congratulations if like, you have a boyfriend, you have a fiance, like you have a girlfriend, you made it in life. Hello, good morning. Happy Thursday. So when I got back from the writing center yesterday, per usual, I feel like I'm always so tired on Wednesday evenings. So I just ate some leftover chili for dinner and Zach came over. It was just a cute, cozy little night in because the weather was still really wild. But it is 9 a.m. and I have a cute little laptop. Been doing some vlog watching for the diss, which is still so wild that I'm even doing this. And I mentioned that I'm focusing on Brooke, specifically the way that she talks about dating and how we've seen like the history of her channel, um, a lot more censorship and strategic disclosure in different ways. So I just watched a video from four years ago, from 2020, and it's called Get Ready With Me For A Hinge Date, four exclamation points, parentheses, yikes. And the video opens up with her staring into the camera saying, guys, I genuinely can't wait to read the hate comments on this video. So, you know, there's a lot that I can do with that regarding embodied awareness and audience awareness. Um, and the description box of the video says, can't believe I'm doing this, LOL. And then all throughout the video, I was jotting down a bunch of quotes and things that she was saying that I can't wait to like get into and analyze and sort of juxtapose with her current videos um, to talk about the way that this sort of reactive censorship is happening. Um, so she has a quote in the beginning of the video where she says, I said in a recent video, I don't know how much of my dating life I wanna share. But here we are, so love that for me because I really wasn't gonna share a lot about my dating life, but then honestly, I was thinking about it and I was like, I would really benefit from watching a video like this right now. A lot going on there. Putting yourself in her audience's shoes, uh, demonstrating a lot of audience awareness, but also self-awareness. Um, and then something fascinating happens in this video, which is such layered demonstrations of embodied awareness, she screen records and puts her Hinge dating profile on the screen. And she talks through her mental process for why she has each picture on the screen. So at the same time that she is unpacking her thought process and her sort of like rhetorical reasoning for posting these things to attract romantic partners, men, she's also justifying them to her audience, which is predominantly young women. So it's like these two different audiences and it's like layered in primary and secondary audience and it's layered obviously like chronologically and 
my mind was like spinning and I was like so excited and typing like furiously at this part um so she is like I'm gonna put my screen recording here and she says please give me honest feedback below and then she moves sort of step by step through each post so for her first post she says I think it's a really flattering photo of me I think it's a pretty accurate representation of what I really look like okay interesting and then for her second photo is her with like two guys and she's sort of hugging one of them and she says then I have this full body picture of me it shows I'm cool with boys that speaks for itself uh and then she says another picture of me with my friend andrew another guy and then she says cool with boys and then she laughs awkwardly so the laugh awkwardly is really interesting because i feel like that showing the sort of like awareness of her youtube audience is going to sort of react and think that it's cringy that that was her rhetorical rationale for doing that for hinge um and also all of this is just so fascinating because i made a note to myself like i feel like based on her current videos the amount of censorship that she includes with like her current boyfriend this would never happen she would never do any of this sort of level of disclosure a lot of it is strategically censored or rhetorically censored and she has a note sort of like in the middle end of the video or like a comment <laughs> Where she says, I want to talk about like dating and stuff like this on my channel because I feel like it's a part of life. Like it's a part of my 20s now. I got one comment that I deleted because I delete all of my stupid comments. Explicit mentions of censorship. Someone was like, you're not really dating. And I was like, I'm literally going on a date this week. I just don't understand. I'm not. I don't know what else you want me to say. I'm going on a date like I am dating. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to tell these people, the ones that she's on a date with, what I do and they're gonna go to my channel and watch these videos and be like oh she made a video getting ready for the date that I went on with her that's cool and I'm gonna be like yep <laughs> which is really I got I can't stop saying like it's just interesting there's so much to do with this um I'm excited to like sit down and really parse it all out um yeah so I think I'm going to take a little bit of a break, eat some breakfast, and then try and do a little more writing on this. Um, and then I have another writing center shift today. Just going to make some protein pancakes and I'll throw in some chocolate chips for a quick little easy breakfast. Most of my vlogs are like just some PJs with my hair looking like it really needs to be brushed. But that's how a lot of my life is, honestly. Um, anyway, the pancakes were delicious, it's just what I wanted, and I'm feeling like I needed a little extra boost of energy to really get some writing done. So I'm gonna drink a little cold brew. Have I been drinking two cups of coffee a couple times a week in a day? Yeah. But people drink like energy drinks like crazy, and I never drink energy drinks. So two cups of coffee a day is not gonna kill me, I'll be okay. This one is cold brew, which is, yeah, a lot of caffeine, but life's short. This is a duo, La Colombe cold brew, silk creamer. Oh my goodness, I can't get it open. Okay, there we go. I know I need to write, but I'm gonna read a little bit more of that book by Emma McGuire, just to like, Get a sense of like style and i don't know i like to just read a page or two before i write just just like get in the zone feel inspired 10:47. i wrote 758 words i'm really happy with that a lot of it was quotes and it was pretty much all just like summarizing what's going on in the video and i left like places i always leave it and like a, oh my gosh my hair looks crazy i always leave it with like a green highlight of like notes to myself like come back and explain this so i left green highlights of like explain how this is demonstrating audience awareness explain how this is demonstrating like embodied hyper awareness but i wanted to get like the structure of how i want to talk about everything down and the summary of it all for this video in particular while it was like fresh in my mind and i think i just need to like sit with these big ideas a little bit more because like i said 
like a couple hours ago like this is all really interesting and really exciting and I know that there's a lot there but I need to just like let it like marinate and simmer on a back burner in my brain um of like what exactly this means rhetorically why this is rhetorically significant how this is relating to writing specifically so I'll come back in either tomorrow or tomorrow is Friday oh my god okay so I'll come back in tomorrow and I will like explain how this is like relating to those things but feel good got a solid session of work done I was working from like eight o'clock to almost 11 maybe even before eight o'clock with like a break for breakfast and breaks to vlog and stuff but feel good with that so I am going to get ready now to go work at the Red Center. Okay, I decided not to put makeup on, just to give my skin a chance to breathe. I feel like it's been breaking out a little bit this past week, but put some dry shampoo in my hair, ran a brush through it. Really lazy girl outfit, just wearing this like loose sweater because it's cold again today. Light wash baggy jeans, platform converse. And I packed myself a little lunch. Being a lunchbox girl is becoming my, not even a lunchbox, like a little snack box girl is becoming my personality trait. Um, and it is 11.40, so I'm gonna head out to the writing center. Okay, many hours later, it is 5.05. Frelly is on my freshly made bed. I got home from the writing center and Megan was like, I'm actually gonna go to Kroger. And I was like, yeah, I'll just, come along why not it's been so long since we've like been grocery shopping together we got some stuff for this weekend her mom and sister are actually coming for the eclipse on monday which is like a huge deal here because bloomington is one of the few cities that's in the path of totality so class is like canceled on monday the university is basically like shut down for all things like normal university business wise there's like a bunch of events going on i am scared to like leave my house because i think traffic is going to be wild even like Kroger today was already like not like panicked like prepping for a storm there wasn't like that anxiety there but just like really busy and sort of like a frenzy in that way like really low on produce really low on eggs and milk and just like a bunch of stuff like that but I'm glad that we were able to get everything we needed I'm sure it'd only get crazier if we waited any longer um I had a rough morning after I finished vlogging. Uh, in a series of like 20 minutes, I managed to do a few really annoying things. The main one for getting that lunch that I packed. So I was really hungry when I got to the writing center. Hi, Purr. She's jealous, she wants me to lay down, which I'm gonna do in just a second. Um, broke a nail on my car door. It was super freaking cold. I couldn't find parking, so I was late to my shift. It didn't matter because like no one was signed up. But yeah, so it was a bit of a rough morning. But since I only had one person signed up for my three-hour shift, I did manage to get some grading done, so that was really nice. So I'm going to take some time now just to lay in bed, read my book for a second, um, and then I have a therapy call at 7 o'clock. So I want to feel like I have some, like, obviously some mental and emotional energy for that. <laughs> Happy Friday. Clearly, just got out of the shower. Washed my hair for the first time since I got a cut. I'm gonna style it. I feel like once you wash it yourself and style it yourself, you know like what the cut looks like. And I have office hours at noon on Zoom. And then I think I'm going to take on a project of like trying to redo some things in my room. This is clearly a mess, but it's also just like really cluttered. I'm thinking of taking that painting down, thinking of taking that, just like decluttering a lot of stuff. I have so many purses here, which I use all of them, but I probably don't need to keep them all on display. I could keep some in my closet. Um, just cleaning things up. Finished my hair, threw on some makeup. It is a little after 11 o'clock right now. I'm in my office, gonna grade some podcasts and then Zoom a student for office hours. <laughs> Okay, changed into a much more casual sweater. Just like to wear something slightly nicer on top when I'm zooming. I don't know, make me feel professional. And some sneakers. And 
gonna go to home goods tj maxx and hopefully i find some good stuff that is cheap but also is solving my storage problems and making things feel slightly refreshed i'm back it's 3 30 bloomington oh, bloomington tj maxx and home goods are on the other side of bloomington so it's like a 25 minute drive there and then a 25 minute drive back but sometimes it just like really feels far and today was one of those days <laughs> i like made it through the whole gals on the go podcast and i only listened to it driving there and driving back traffic also isn't great just because the eclipse and stuff like that and i also got gas just because i'm like scared of the aftermath of the eclipse just with so many people coming to bloomington i didn't get everything i wanted but i got some fun stuff to help like spice up my room it really is just gonna benefit from like a really thorough decluttering Thank you. 